back to other news. This is Julia. South Korea support Timor Leste's accession to ASEAN. South Korean ambassadors to Timor Leste Shin Man Taek said the South Korean government supports Timorese joining ASEAN, and Korea promised to provide capacity building for areas that Timorese government needs. Uh, Korea is ready to support Timor Leste accession into the ASEAN, sports such as capacity building, so we are ready to support Timor Leste joining the ASEAN. Taek added, South Korean government committed and believed that Timor Leste will become the member of ASEAN organization. On the same occasion, the ambassador said, this year South Korea will recruit 1,000 Timorese workers to work in South Korea, compares with the previous year, which only recruited 500 Timorese workers. Timor Leste will establish free economic zone in the border. The Timorese president, Jose Ramos Horta, disclosed the information when presenting Timor Leste's challenge and the development progress in the least developed countries conference scope, and the meeting was participated by 46 countries, the fifth time event organized by the United Nations in Doha, Qatar. Horta added, the infrastructure sector is an important sector to be invested as it will grow and transform the economic and the borders economic zone will support the country's development in the future as well as attract the investors. Special economic zones help numerous countries spur economic development, attract foreign investment and foster productivity. An ambitious free trade zone encompassed in more and Indonesia is under consideration. We must explore collaborative solutions we develop partners to address this thoroughly, to address this through technology transfer, concessional finance, and other opportunities for LDCs to close the gaps and facilitate low carbon transition in energy infrastructure. In this context, I call on UNTA to dedicate special attention to LDCs within its new global alliance of a special economic zone. Meanwhile, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Timor-Leste, Adal G. Zamagno, said, Up to this date, Timor-Leste remain depends on the petroleum fund. There should be different mechanisms found on how to obtain domestic income through another activity to develop the country's economy. Earlier this year, Timor-Leste Ministry of Finance informed that Timor-Leste's economy is fragile. As per this month, the Santos Company, which whom responsible for the oil exploration in the Bayou Undan field, has stopped their operation as the oil dried up in this well. Actual Timor Leste's petroleum fund shown in the state budget with a value of 17 billion US dollar. Timor Leste is in the least developed countries and remain need international support. Timorese president acknowledged that, meantime, Timor Leste has not been able to be excluded as the member of the least developed countries. As Timor Leste remains weak, its people live under poverty. Horse explained it when presenting the challenge and development progress of Timor Leste at the fifth summit of least developed countries organized by the United Nations in Doha, Qatar, earlier February 2023, and this summit was chaired by the president of Malawi, Lazarus Chakwera. Our country is fragile. Our economic is fragile. Today can be good, but tomorrow can be natural disasters. Crises like the pandemic and the crisis in Ukraine affect our economy and can be moved backward. This is why I'm here in Doha, in order to discuss with the government. We told them Timor Leste is not yet ready to be excluded from the least developed countries category. We still need international support to strengthen our economy, to help diversify into oil and petroleum for various economics, to develop the agriculture, industry and tourism. All this will take a minimum time. I said we still need another 10 years to step out from the fragile state status. Horse also urges all Timorese entities to work hard and cooperate with the international community for them to be able to support Timor Leste to reconstructing and diversify the economic. Hence, Timor Leste will not depend on petroleum fund and find different way on how to improve the country's economy. Then in the next 10 years, Timor Leste can be excluded from the least developed countries list. At the present, there are 46 least developed countries in the world, such as Timor Leste, Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, Nepal, Bangladesh, includes countries from African continent, which are also weak in the economy and actively getting support from developing countries and organizations such as the United Nations, the European Union, Australia, Japan and Korea. Four people died after floods hit Malaysia.
Officials said four people were killed and nearly 40,000 residents displaced after continuous heavy rain triggered flooding in the southern Malaysia state of Johor. Residents in Johor gathered their belongings, with some transporting home electrical appliances over flood water and made their way to flood relief centers after their homes were inundated by water. According to the National Disaster Management Agency, more than 200 flood relief shelters have been opened in Johor as the number of people displaced by the floods increased. According to the Malaysian Meteorological Department, heavy rain is forecast to hit several parts of Johor. Kem Soka sentenced to 27 years of house jail. Prominent Cambodian opposition figure Kem Soka was sentenced to 27 years of house arrest and also barred from running for political office or voting in elections after being found guilty of treason by a local court. W. Patrick Murphy, the United States ambassador to Cambodia, attended the hearing in Phnom Penh said the case was miscarriage of justice, calling on authorities to allow all Cambodians to enjoy universal human rights of peaceful assembly and free expression. Kem Soka's lawyer speaking to reporters after the verdict outside the court says this legal team would lodged an appeal adding that the former leader of now disbanded Cambodian National Rescue Party had also been stripped of all his political and citizens' rights. Kem Soka was arrested in 2017 over accusations he was conspiring with the United States to overthrow self-styles strongman Hun Sen, who has ruled Cambodia for nearly four decades. At least 70 people died at Pertamina fuel station in Indonesia. An official at the city's main firefighting unit said at least 17 people were killed when a fire broke out at the fuel storage station operated by Indonesia's state energy company Pertamina in the capital of Jakarta. Footage from the broadcaster showed the fire, which started after 8 p.m. local time, burned some houses and sent nearby residents in the densely populated areas into a panic, some of whom fled with their belongings. A Pertamina spokesperson said the fire had been extinguished at about 10.30 p.m. Pertamina in a statement said that the cause of the incident were still being investigated and that evacuation efforts were ongoing. The company said the fuel supply for the Jakarta area remained secure as it planned to divert supply from other terminals. According to the country's energy ministry, the fuel station has a capacity of over 300,000 kiloliters. Authority evacuated victims after fuel station fire. Evacuees from the fire that killed 17 people in the Indonesian capital Jakarta said they had run for their lives when the blaze broke out. Most of them lived close to the Pertamina fuel storage station, which caught fire after 8 p.m. local time. According to Rahmat Cristanto, an official at the firefighting unit that two of the fatalities were children, while 50 people, including one child, were injured. The head of a nearby evacuation center, Muhammad Faisal Tuhulele, said the number of evacuees was rising. Most of the injured people are suffering from burns. Jakarta's acting governor, Heru Budi Hartono, told reporters that the government will pay for their medical treatment. The company said the fuel supply for the Jakarta area remains secure as it plans to divert supply from other terminals. Pertamina Chief Executive Officer Nikke Vidyawati apologized for the fire and said that it will reflect internally to avoid similar incidents from ever occurring again. UN says Myanmar military caused perpetual human rights crisis. A report published by the United Nations accused Myanmar's military of creating a perpetual human rights crisis in the Southeast Asian country and called for an immediate stop to the violence. Myanmar's military has created a perpetual human rights crisis through the continuous use of violence, including the killing, arbitrary arrest, torture and enforced disappearance of anti-coup opponents. Two years after the military launched a coup, the generals have embarked on a scorched earth policy in an attempt to stamp out opposition. Tragically, regional and global efforts for peace and restraint have largely fallen on deaf ears. The military, emboldened by continuous and absolute impunity, has consistently shown disregard for international obligations and principles. The High Commissioner is calling for urgent, concrete action to end this festering catastrophe. 
The report, which documents human rights concerns between February 1, 2022 and January 31, 2023, found that violence had intensified in the northwestern and southeastern Myanmar due to the military's indiscriminate airstrikes and artillery shelling mass burnings of villages to displace civilian populations and denial of humanitarian access. James Rothaver, chief of the UN Human Rights Office Myanmar's team, said that armed clashes were occurring in about 77% of the country. Youth protest for climate change action in Indonesia. Dozens of youths and environmental activists marched on the streets of Jakarta to demand action for climate change. Members of the group demanded serious action by the Indonesian government on high sea levels, extreme weather, and urged the population to choose leaders wisely in the upcoming general election in 2024. As one of the world's biggest greenhouse gas emitters, Indonesia last year set a more ambitious target for reducing carbon emission by 31.89% on its own or 43.2% with international support by 2030. Indonesia had also launched the first phase of mandatory carbon trading for coal power plants, parts of efforts by Southeast Asia's biggest economy, to boost renewable energy and achieve net zero emissions by 2060. Thank you very much everyone. Have a lovely weekend. See you soon.